Okay, I'm starting this over because I was afraid I was on the wrong channel. So, hello, what lovelies. Just waiting to see a few people come on. Hello, how are y'all doing? Oh, it's so nice to see your beautiful handles pop up. Please say hello, let me know where you're from. Let me know why you're here with Chronicon. Um, I'm really excited. My name is Nitika Chopra and I'm the founder of Chronicon. Hi there, I'm doing well too. I'm really excited for today. Um, so we have an amazing, amazing lineup for you today. And basically we're gonna be talking, oh, from Indianapolis, that's awesome. We're gonna be talking to three incredible, incredible change makers. Hi from DC, that's awesome. Actually, I just realized I need to turn off my fan. Hold on one second. I need to turn this off. Because that will mess up the audio. Okay, great. Now I think I've remembered everything, because you know, so much happening. Hi, Carrie Twigs on here. Okay, so we're gonna get started. Um, so my name is Nitika Chopra, and I am the founder of Chronicon. And I wanted to host this really important conversation on IG Live today because as many of you know, especially if you're watching from the United States, we have one of the most important elections of our lifetime happening in November. And I, I personally have felt so defeated, so frustrated, so scared, so tired. You know, all of those things come up for me when I think about what's happening um, in our political system and actually in every single system in this country, to be honest with you. And I know so many of you watching feel that deeply when it comes to the healthcare system. And it can feel like, what's the point? And I wanna be the first one to admit, I get that feeling. And I think what I have realized over the last few years, especially, and especially since Trump was elected and you know things became that much harder to ignore, although they've been happening for a long time. Um, as much as the desire is to protect and you know kind of shut your computer or shut your phone and just say, I'm gonna focus on something else, I'm gonna think about something else, I'm not gonna you know engage with it too much. That is a privilege for us to be able to do that, right? So I wanted to not come from this conversation in like a way that feels shaming or anything like that. We all have so much going on, especially if you are a member of the Chronicon community. You probably are dealing with your health in a pretty significant way, as I am too. I wanted to create a space for us to have this conversation about why it's so important for us to be voting this November and for us to also not just vote, I think it's also about engaging our loved ones in the conversation around voting, getting people to be thinking about it and getting people to not have that, you know, detached vibe <laughs> with voting. So I have three incredibly powerful, incredibly powerful women that we're gonna talk to today. And it's gonna be a really, you know, um, like get a cup of tea or your favorite latte, you know, light a candle if you want, like do what you got to do to get yourself in a mode to receive the information. And a couple things that I just want to let you know of. So we have three speakers today. I'm really honored to be interviewing and talking to. The first speaker is my dear friend, Carrie Twig, and I'm going to be bringing her on in just a moment. And I'll tell you a little bit more about her and the work she's done and she's doing and why she was someone I couldn't wait to talk to. And then another friend of mine, Jenna Arnold, who's an author, and I'll tell you all about her as well when I speak to her later. And then we have Dr. Akila Kade, and I'm really excited about her as well. So this is gonna be a really beautiful conversation. I hope you take some time and carve out some time to really focus on what we're talking about today. And then the other thing that I want you to know is that in the link in the Chronicon bio, once we're done, I want you to go to that link and there are a few different resources for you. So one is simply figuring out if you're registered to vote. It's a really fast, free, easy process and we wanted to basically keep those links and keep those resources for you so you know Chronicon's got your back, 
you know where to go to get all the things that you need because I know there's a lot of stuff flying around. So first of all, check if you're registered to vote and where you're registered to vote. And then there's also a link that um, really like lays out what you can do to vote this fall. I know one of the biggest things with the chronic hunt community is that many of us, including myself, we're immune compromised and it's really scary. And I think part of why I wanted to do this is because I started looking into how do I get my vote to count? How do I cast my ballot and do all these things? And I was like, they could not make it harder. They could not make it harder for us, right? So I'm hoping that today adds a little bit of levity to the conversation and allows us to just feel empowered. So there is a link in our bio um, that says how to vote this fall. Tons of resources in there. Um, and you can basically choose your own adventure. How do you want to vote? Doesn't matter. Just make sure you're on top of it and that you're voting. And then the other link that we have that I want to make sure you know about is it says demo crew on it. And what's really cool about this, I just got an email from my girlfriend, Sarah Sophie Flicker. She and a bunch of her friends are creating this, what they're calling a demo crew. And basically what it's about is, you know, typically during an election time, we would, many people would be canvassing. They would be doing things out on the streets. They would be, you know, really getting to people's homes and getting to the places that we really need to be and all this stuff. Hi, Sharon. Um, but that's not possible this time, right? So what they've created is this demo crew. You can fill out a Google link and it basically tells you, like ex every week it gives you something to do so that you can show up almost as if you were showing up to the polls. I'm sorry, not showing up to polls, showing up to Canvas, which is really cool. So you can sort of do that and help and feel like you're actually moving things forward. So all of those links are in our bio for you. Please, after this is over, go check them out, spend some time, share them with friends. They're not our links. We don't get any affiliate or any, I mean, there's nothing you know tied to it. We just wanted to give you resources. And this conversation is going to be saved to our IGTV. We'll have it up, um, I think, Probably next week we'll have it up. We like to edit it a little bit afterwards, um, but it'll be there for you. So enough about what I have to say. I'm so excited. I get to talk to my dear, beautiful, and brilliant friend, Carrie Twig. Carrie, in true fashion, <laughs> I thought she was going to be in London, but she's in Croatia right now. <laughs> Hi, Carrie. How are you? Hi. Hi. Hi, how are you? I'm good. I know your internet is shaky and like there's a lot going on and whatever, but we're going to hopefully be able to have this conversation with you and it's going to be great. <laughs> how are yeah, you feeling? Let's go for it. Let's give it a shot. I am really well. Um, you know, election times are always a little bit crazy for me. So I am doing, taking the last couple weeks that I can to decompressed from what has already been a pretty difficult year, an exciting year, but also just, you know, challenging in the ways that it has been for everyone. And so um, yeah. me and the love of my life are out in Croatia trying to, which I would typically not tell the internet, but since you've yeah. already said it, I'll repeat it and confirm it. <laughs> Sorry. I didn't even think about that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I I will be mindful of that next time. But yes, I'm so glad that you're that you're out enjoying and, and being safe and, and doing what you gotta do. So that's awesome. Yeah. Um and you know, I just wanted to sort of give people an understanding of why I really wanted to make sure you were a part of this conversation. So we've been friends for a long time and Carrie for those of you who are watching, has been a huge, huge, I mean, huge doesn't even begin to describe how much of a supporter Carrie has been for the Chronicon mission and community. So I really want you all to know that as she's taking her time to talk to us today, um, just from the beginning of telling her about Chronicon, you have been so incredibly supportive and I deeply, deeply appreciative of that. And um, as much as we've been friends for a long time, and I knew that, you know, you were at the White House and, you know, working with Obama and Biden and all of that for a long time. Um, and you're also an incredible producer and create really meaningful content um, and all of that. I knew all of those things. But I didn't realize, I just heard recently in an interview that you did, um, that you were the first person to actually brief 
Joe Biden on the Black Lives Matter movement because you were at the White House during the time that it really started to take off. It really started to, you know, um, to, to be at the forefront of conversations that we needed to have, that we need to be having. So I bring that up because, first of all, I want people to understand the magnitude at which, like, you are amazing. Um, and I also bring that up because I know, like, real talk, not everybody is convinced about Mr. Joe Biden, right? And so I know as someone who is just like, I personally feel like we, we got to vote blue and that's, that's, really, that's really it. But I wanted to know if you could talk a little bit to, you know, a person out there who might be frustrated, might be feeling like, what's the point, might be feeling like, are they even going to care? Um, and why it's important for, for them to show up this November. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Chronicon is so important. You are so important. The work that you do is so important because we are reconnecting with our health in a way and understanding that that is a central part of our own humanity and how it makes everything else work, right? Our relationships don't work. Our, our environment doesn't work unless we have a centered, healthy attitude. And that's about the food you eat. That's about the media that you consume. That's about how you think about your mental and psychological health, as well as your physiological and biological health. The same is also true for your civic health. You cannot have a healthy system if you do not have a healthy civic community and a civic reality. And without a healthy civic environment, you jeopardize all the other types of health that exist, right? So we are currently not in a healthy civic environment in the United States. And that has put our actual physiological health in profound jeopardy. That has challenged our emotional health in profound, unprecedented ways, um, our psychological health, right? Mm -hmm. And so it is a core, civic health is a core component of all the other types of health. And it's really easy two years ago to say, oh, I'm insulated or I have more immediate mm -hmm. pressing concerns. Um, that's clearly not the case anymore. And so this is this our restoring civic health, whatever that means to um, individuals, right? There's over 500,000 elected officials in the United States. So wow. it's not just one election. Those yeah. are a bunch of people making a bunch of decisions about the health and well-being of you and your family and your community. And so in the same way that Chronicon is encouraging and empowering its members and its community to show up for themselves and for one another and be their own advocates, you have to do the same thing in order to have civic health. You have to show up. You have to participate. You have to, in a consistent way, be an integral part of the system. And that doesn't mean mm -hmm. one first Tuesday in November, right? It means consistently day in and day out for those small elections, for the local elections, for, um, um, for understanding how these systems of power actually function. And for those who mm -hmm. have been um, able to say, who have had the privilege to say, you know, these, these choices, these, these elections have consequences that don't matter to me, that haven't impacted mm -hmm. my daily life. Um, I think very obviously that's, that's no longer the case. Um, mm -hmm. And it probably never was the case, but it was easier to say a year ago. And so, you know, when I think about healthy civics, it's yeah. when I think about health overall, they're mm -hmm. intricately linked Civic health is intricately linked to my emotional health, my psychological health, my physiological health. Um, and in the same way that I don't, I'm not my fittest if I work out or, you know, go to Pilates once and that's it for six months. Like that's basically the same principle holds true. Um, if you vote in one election every four years, if you pay attention for six weeks every few like that's just that's not how you actually maintain health so that would be yeah. my my wrap on why it all how how it's intricately or intrinsically connected mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I love the way that you describe that because I think that that's something, I mean, I can speak for myself. Like, I think that's something I, I kind of get, but like to put it into those words, it really just makes it a lot more tangible. And I think for people who are watching from the Chronicon community who know how much of a struggle it is with their health care and with all of the different systems happening with all the doctors and medicines and all the things, you know, it is something that's really obvious when you put it that way. Um, so I love that. And actually, when you were talking, I was having this flashback of, I think it was like a couple years ago now, but you and I at a friend's party and you kind of had said something to me about how you know, you should really share about, because I talk to you about political stuff, or like I talk to you about what I'm thinking about, you know, what's happening in our country and all the systems and, you know, things that I wish were different. But I, I hadn't really done that publicly so much because I was afraid. And you were the first person to be like, out of nowhere, first of all, <laughs> you were just like, By the way, I think you should do this. And I was like, she sees me. I need to do that. <laughs> Which is so accurate. You do see me, which I love. Um, but my point in bringing that up is that I think that there's a really interesting edge that a lot of people are up against right now, you know, of like, as you're saying, it's not just about the one election. And it's not only about even like, uh, like you and I voting. You know, it's about so much more, like getting the people in your life to understand, getting those conversations to happen, being uncomfortable, even, you know, we're already uncomfortable. That's what I always say. Like, you know, so, so can you speak to that a little bit, just about that edge of like people starting to have those conversations with other people in their lives and how important that is, or maybe even ways that you've seen that people do it in a way that works? Uh, you know, I think for me, it's all the same, right? And so whether or not that is, it, it's it's repetition. The more you do it, the easier it gets. The more you say something, the more eloquent it will, you'll be able to express it. And, yeah. you know, I think that everyone needs to remember, despite whatever social pressure exists around a particular conversation or an election or a political issue or a social issue, like you got to do it your own way. You got to do it the way that works for you. And mm -hmm. there's all sorts of, there's forms of activism that I don't engage in because they're not mm -hmm. right for me. And that's a judgment that I have to have. I have to, if I, if I don't feel safe, if I don't feel emotionally connected to the manner of the conversation, I won't do it well. I love that. And so we should all be participating in a way that honors ourselves mm -hmm. as much as it honors the conversation that we're trying to have. And you don't do any good if you are bending, tying yourself into knots mm -hmm. <laughs> in order to do something that you think that you should, because you'll just never do it again. Mm -hmm. And this is a moment for bravery and it is a moment for courage and it is a moment for radical honesty and disclosure and truth and expression and all of those things. But that can look a bunch of different ways. And it's scary sometimes, no matter how you do it, anytime you do something for the first time. Yeah. But just keep, you just got to keep doing it and finding the way that works for you and that is true for you and that honors your own identity and your ability to show up. Um, in a way that that is that is a true reflection of who you are. And that's that's an introspective process, right? But in the same way that you have to learn how to talk to a doctor, you have to learn how to talk to a neighbor. You have to learn how to talk to you have to buck up some courage and figure out what's going to work for you. Does that mean you bring notes and you read from questions? Does that mean that you write an email, that you leave a voicemail, that like what all of those things, that's the same type of conversation. Anytime you're advocating for yourself, it's the exact same type of conversation as it relates to a social issue that you care about or a political issue. Um, and, and use those tools that you have that you've honed probably and refined in order to advocate for your own health or that of your family or friends um, or your community or in schools or whatever. You, that, it's all the same. Ugh, I feel so comforted listening to you, honestly, because I, <laughs> I really do. I really do. Um, I really do because I think that 
that was a huge turning point for, for me from going from, you know, again, this like detached feeling of like, well, I don't know how to, you know, I physically can't always march, right? Like physically, there's so many people in our community who are disabled. I have arthritis. Like I can't physically do that. And I think it always looked like one, only one way. And it felt like every time I saw an activist, it was like someone who, you know, was giving themselves to the cause in such a powerful, beautiful way. But it's also like, I I physically couldn't handle that, you know, like not sleeping or having schedules that are a certain way or traveling in a certain amount or whatever. I just physically couldn't do it. And so I think, I know a lot of people in our community feel the same way and it makes, it can make you feel like there isn't room for you, you know, to be a part of that conversation. And I think what you're saying makes me feel like, I hope people feel really empowered by that and feel like, you know, even like writing down your skill sets or writing down what are like the five things that you love to do. And then like, how can you channel that into some activism basically? Right. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. I love that yeah. so much, Mary. This has been awesome. I can't believe we've Good. already been talking for like over 15 minutes and this has been so, so, so wonderful. Thank you for taking time out of your trip to talk to me and our audience. At My Talk. pleasure. Yeah, and, and we'll be posting this, uh, you know, on our IGTV soon, so we'll let you know when it's up. And, yeah, have a beautiful All right. night. Awesome. Thanks, Thank Harry. you. You too. Okay, bye. Yes. Yeah. Bye. All right, so now we're going to bring on the beautiful Jenna Arnold, who's here somewhere. There she is. We're going to add her in here. Ugh. So for those of you who are just joining – my name is Nitika Chopra, and I am the founder of Chronicon, and I am so excited to be here with none other than this author. Raising our hands. I'm so excited. Um, I'm not in Arnold. Croatia, but I'm in the <laughs> suburbs of Philly. Amazing. And I'd like yeah, to be in Croatia. <laughs> I know. With Carrie. Same. But here's the thing. If I were still in, if I were in Croatia with Carrie, we'd be talking about exactly what we're talking about right now. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing that's like amazing. We'd, we'd order rosé and we'd be like okay let's talk about, about, let's talk about this whole ridiculous dumpster fire as people keep calling it yeah um, it's my favorite so, it's my favorite analogy. yeah so I want to make sure I let people know who you are so this is the beautiful amazing talented brilliant Jenna Arnold um she is one of the founders of the Women's March and Jenna is also the co-founder of Organize which I say revolutionize, which I think most people say this, revolutionize the way that we interact, engage, and think about organ donation, which I remember when you were starting this, and I was like, wait, she's what? doing what? <laughs> and like, it's actually getting people to think about organ donation. It got me to think about organ donation, and so many, you know, hundreds, thousands, maybe millions of people to think about organ donation in a completely new way, um, in a way that really saves and changes lives, which is profoundly amazing. And then because you weren't done yet, you know, just starting marches and doing all the things, you also <laughs> wrote this book, Raising Our Hands, which I just want to read the subtitle right here because it'll tell people exactly why you wrote it. And it says, how white women can stop avoiding hard conversations, start accepting responsibility, and find our place on the new front lines. So first of all, it's incredible. You have a quote from our girl, Angela Rye, right at the top, who's like pimping it out, thinks it's awesome. I know Carrie read it too. So much love for you and the work that you do. Um, and I just wanted to talk to you today because I, first of all, I love you. We were talking, we were talking this morning. <laughs> do we want to bring that conversation? No, 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 no. no. Okay, okay. 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 Private conversation. Um, but I'm, I'm very bribable though. If you want to pay me, you can probably find me on Venmo. <laughs> for the people that are watching that might want to know our private conversations. Mm-hmm. Okay. Let's not do that. So the reason why I wanted to make sure you were a part of this conversation today with voting for our health is because you really have found ways to focus on white women and getting them to join the conversation in a way that they might not have always felt they knew how, or they might have also just kind of been a part of the patriarchal systems that keep their lives safe and happy and healthy. Mm -hmm. Right. And so like, and we're not saying that's every white woman, obviously, but that that's something that you speak to. So 
I wanted to, to start with, um, you know, one of the things I was talking to Carrie about, one of the things I think about a lot is that this is so emotionally, physically, mentally overwhelming, what's happening and what's been happening for a long time. And I know with people in our community that have chronic illnesses that are already feeling overwhelmed and already feeling like they don't, they don't know how they're going to make it through because of their health, um, it can be really easy to just sort of go to sleep, like literally and figuratively. And I get that. I've done that before, for sure. Um, so I kind of wanted you to speak to that, to start with that. Like, why, oh, why is he not, what did you say? I said, hold, please. I, I have my favorite quote. Just oh, getting that ready to go. Great. Amazing. I can't wait. So why, why must we not do that maybe ever again, but especially now? Well, before I read my favorite quote, I, I mean, listen, I think this is a really, uh, we're, I keep saying this to folks, like you, we don't appreciate what's really happening right now. And like, we'll start to wrap our arms around it like in 25 years from now. And so this idea of like trying to figure out what is and isn't is a bit of a futile attempt. I think language has been completely worthless at this point. You know, if you took a look at any of the subjects on in the, the social um, social justice space, like when I talk about my biases or my anti-Semitic biases that I have to work on, like I'm using the term anti-Semitism in the same way that we use that those terms to, you know, apply those terms to folks who are carrying Pier 1 tiki torches in like Virginia. Like there's just, we have to, we ha ourselves, the way that we communicate has to slice and dice and be able to handle um, the breadth of what's really happening now. Because this isn't just like a couple new policies. This isn't just like defunding the police or not funding the police or getting more mental health advocates on the street. Like it is, this is a like our species is being forced to grow. And I don't know if that's going to take like five minutes, five years, or like a couple more generations. But this idea of like how we pay attention and how we participate, we have to be really careful not to fall back into so much of like the white supremacist construct of like, you either got to show up perfectly or don't show up at all. Mm -hmm. Right? Like this fear of like, well, if I miss that March, then like, someone's, I can't go to the next one. And my mom gave me a really beautiful gift when I was like, let's pretend 14 or maybe yesterday. When she reminded me, like, no one's watching you. Like no one's paying attention to what you're doing and not in a way to be like, okay, go yeah. check out and go to like, watch, binge watch that Netflix series that like everyone's talking about. But yeah. this idea of like, everyone's really concerned about themselves. And in a world where all we do is perform something on social media, like there's such an easy way for us to like show who we actually are when the truth is, is like people fall asleep on the couch without brushing their teeth, like nightly, you know, like this idea of what imperfection actually is. Totally. And so one, I want to like remove this mandate of like, how you're supposed to be. And I have one prerequisite for your audience. And it's the same prerequisite that I have for myself, which is the requirement of our time is to pay attention. And what I mean by that is not this like, okay, I'll just wait for it to show up on my feed. But I was in conversation with um, an author last week who write, wrote a spectacular book. And she's like, but Jenna, how do I prioritize like saving the whales or voting or freedom of speech? And, da -da 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 -da. and I was like, I, I, I don't. I don't know, but you don't have to show up in yeah. perfection or having the solution. No one's looking to you to solve it. And I love the analogy of, um, or it's this very specific example that I used, um, or an experience that I had. So it was about a week and a half, two weeks after George Floyd was murdered. And there was a lot of discussion online about defunding the police. And it was in that like window of time when people are like, here's the eight step process to defunding the police. And I saw it. And like two days later, I went to go repost it. And one of my friends who's on the front lines of, um, uh, law, police, incarceration, reformation. Um, I was like, Hey, I texted her. I'm like, Hey, where's that thing that you posted on Tuesday? I want to repost it. And she texted back. She goes, Oh no, no, no. 0.4 and 0.9 didn't add up the way that it should have. And it wasn't an opportunity for me to like lean back and be like, Oh, we can't do this. 
it was an opportunity for me to just keep paying attention. And so this idea of like, no one's asking Nitika to show up and save the whales or solve climate change. Jenna isn't in charge of like pulling whatever together to like fix humanity. Yeah. Our only job is to show up <clears throat> and when, uh, to pay attention. And when we pay attention, it will be clear yeah. what we need to do and when. And there's also this freedom of like, knowing that you're not going to show up perfectly all the time, right? Like people posted a lot of black squares. People posted a lot of black and white photos of themselves. And like you posted them and by noon, people are like, I don't know if they're supposed to, what's supposed to. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay. Well, I it's used okay. your edit for the, I took down Great. the black square and then I used your, you had an edit for the, right. the Turkish. The, for the black and white photo. Black and and it's like, it's fine. Yeah. It's fine to not get this right because yeah. we're in the middle of a make or break it for our species. <laughs> this isn't like, does my Thanksgiving spread look good enough? Yeah. Right. Oh, I messed up the Kugel recipe. This is like, we might implode into world war through and into world war three. And just so we're clear. Yeah. Yeah. Like we don't survive that. So yeah. like everyone to the front lines, Everyone pay attention, post the damn black square. If it's wrong by noon, take it down. Mm-hmm. Not a big deal. No one's watching. Yeah. But you need to show up. The point you being uh, here is important. And so I think this idea of rest is like, I think paying attention yeah. lets people sit in the front row seat of a class and not have to think that they have to teach it. Mm. And that's what I want people to do. I want people to be more students and less teachers as I'm sitting here pontificating to all of you. But one of my favorite. Well, I asked you to. I asked you. Okay, fine. Fair, fair, fair. You wanted me to put my lipstick on. Okay. So one of my favorite quotes is, um, you cannot wake a person who is pretending to sleep. And it's by a Diné, it's a Diné, also known as Navajo proverb. And it's this idea of like, it's really easy to pretend to be sleeping or it's really easy to pretend to be ignorant and to not see something that gives you permission to have not known. But the truth is, is like some of us might not have known the intricacies and the nuances, but Mm -hmm. all of us knew there was a problem. Yeah. All of us know there's a healthcare problem. All of us know that that we're not as healthy as we could be. We see it. We see it. Because you see it, because you notice it when you see someone who's really healthy. Yeah. You're like, oh, they're fit. They drink a lot of water. They look well rested. All the rest of us are like. <laughs> <laughs> I love all of that so, so much. And I think, I mean, just like the whole reason why I wanted to do this conversation today is because I just want people to feel empowered to show up. And I think what you're saying is like, that's really j- just do that. Like my grandfather used to always say, start by starting. <laughs> and it's Oh so yeah, that's good. I'm borrowing that. It's like so simple, you know, but I, I have to tell myself that sometimes when I'm like, eh, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. And then I just hear his voice being like, start by starting. Start starting. And- Yeah. And it's really, it's really so important. And I love the way that you're framing it. And I think giving ourselves permission to just like not have to have it all figured out and not have to have it all, all the answers and to be messy. I, I remember when the black and white photo thing came out, I actually was like in a bit of a mental hole about that for like a day. (laughs) Like I was right. You can spin out and guess what, what other damn headlines you missed because you were spinning out about a black and white photo. Yeah. Yeah, totally. And you know what? Like, I got you. I, if you said you copy and pasted what was on my thing, like, yeah. let, let, I like, I'm just going to like follow you on chronic health stuff. <laughs> I battle with my own stuff, but like, let yeah. me, I, I, we, this is what I'm talking about, about like the front lines are right there in the room with you. I will never be a chronic health expert. Nitika will always be a few grades ahead of me on this. She'll never have mastered it, right? We don't do those kinds of things as human beings. And like, she's an upperclassman and I'm going to take her lead. And sometimes I'm going to have an idea. Most of the time, they're probably not going to be applicable, but like, I'm going to follow her on stuff. And like, that's what I mean about like, every person has their own front line. Mm, I love that. And I think that that's part of, that's a huge part of the work sounds like from what you're saying is just like figuring out who are those people on the front lines. And I think- 
that before I even started talking to people about this stuff or trying to talk to people about it, even my private life, I started to gather those people. Like, who are those people? Who can I talk to? Who can I call? Who can I text during, you know, the DNC and be like, I don't understand what they just said. <laughs> or be like, it's okay. Like, no, it's all, no one understands what they're saying know, at the convention. But, but that's like a real thing. It's like the amount of humility that I have to instill to be able to do this. Is, right. It's real. It's very, right. very real. So I can't believe we've already been talking for 15 Wait, minutes. is that it? Are we done? I mean, we can keep and do it again and again and again. Yeah, fine. I just blocked um, them and I'm like, when are Nitik and I doing our own Instagram live? Yeah. Oh my God. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm signed up. I'm already there. I love talking to you um, about all the things. And but let I me just shower you with something for a moment. Um, chronic health is an excellent gateway for a closer examination of our chronic behaviors that cause unhealthiness. And I believe that we as a culture are chronically complacent, chronically agitated, chronically all the things that are causing problems. And I just want to give you some accolades that you are raising your hand and you are going to the tip of the spear is, okay, let's talk about our blood cells. But what you're really opening up is so much more. So thank you. Wow, that means a lot coming from you. And for those of you who haven't read Raising Our Hands yet, Chronicon is in the book. So you definitely need to pick it up. And it's also just like an amazing, powerful like guide. Oh, and then I have a special note from the author, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. I love. I feel very special. Um, you know. But yeah, okay. so I, I go do your it. thing. Thank you so much. We're about love to bring you. our last speaker. I love you so much. I'll okay, talk bye. to you soon. Bye. Um, so I'm super excited. I actually have not met the next speaker, and I feel like I'm just just bursting with joy that I get to meet her. Um, so we have our last speaker coming up here right now. She's just joining. Sent her a voice note yeah. earlier. Hi, beauty. Oh, my God. And you have a friend with you. <laughs> I do. Oh. He has FOMO and likes to be involved when he can be involved. Oh, we're all about, I'm all about puppies and dogs and animal, any kind of animal, except for, like, snakes. I'm not really into snakes. But, you know, yeah. any kind of, like, fluffy, sweet animal, I'm here for it. So, <laughs> hi. First of all, nice to meet you. <laughs> Nice to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> met you before. And so we're talking here for all of you who don't know. Um, Dr. Akila Kade is joining us for our final interview for the Vote for Your Health conversation. And I'm founder of Chronicon, and I wanted to make sure that we talk to, what, what are you going to call you, Dr. Akila or Dr. Kade or just Akila? I want to... Mm -hmm. Whatever you like. People have more issue with doctor than me. I just don't like ever being called miss because I worked too hard to never be a miss ever again. Okay. Well, everyone know that Akila is actually Dr. <laughs> Akila Kade. And I'm going to call you Akila because I feel close to you. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, you know, but people need to know. <laughs> you yeah. worked for this. Um, and you. so in your Instagram, you say that you're a coach and a consultant, and you're also known as the Olivia Pope of diversity, which I, I just love. Um, and I, I really wanted to talk to you today because we have been sort of connected online and, you know, I think watching what each other are, is doing and, and how we're, mm -hmm. we're creating our work and sharing our messages and, I've really, um, I've really been inspired by, you know, your beautiful, beautiful, strong voice that's really helping so many people. So I wanted to make sure that we talked and yeah. yeah. And, um, the whole purpose of this conversation today is to really get people to feel empowered around voting and around showing up. And mm -hmm. I have said, you know, throughout this entire conversation with all the different people that, I have definitely been someone who's been overwhelmed and just felt like my health, yeah. my life, it's just so much. I feel like I'm barely sometimes like stringing all of that together. So then the thought yeah. of like trying to make a real change in a big, big, big way just feels really hard. And like, I, sometimes I can't even really visualize it. 
So I know that you work with clients, you work with people one-on-one, you work with companies, and you really focus on you know, changing the narrative around what diversity and inclusion actually looks like and actually means and not just a buzzword and like really, you know, I want to say like putting your back into it and like getting the work done in a real way. Bend in from the knees, you know, so. <laughs> so I want to. I want to know, like, what do you say to those people out there who are watching that also feel like this is too much? I don't know how I'm going to do this. I don't know if I can. What would you say to someone like that? Uh, It's a privilege to lose interest in advocating for Black lives, right? So what a lot of people forget is that as Black people, we also constantly are doing the work. We're constantly advocating. We're constantly uncomfortable. We just have more experience. And navigating the spaces we have we're comfortable being uncomfortable mm-hmm. um, and that's so we can minimize harm um, <laughs> and harm that's either verbal physical or end of life right and so we're constantly doing that so when people choose to say like oh my god it's just overwhelming it's so much yeah. I just remind them pre-COVID days when I would hop into my luxury car, I was being profiled. When I popped into the cafe and someone stood in front of me because they magically didn't see me in line, you know, to navigate that on the way to the meeting or the way to the airport. And it's microaggression after overt racism, after stereotype, after missed opportunity all the time. It's exhausting. Oh, yeah. So I have no patience for anyone to be like, oh, my God, it's exhausting. It's overwhelming. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. That's my everyday. Um, I also want to share before I forget, I have very fun lighting right now because I'm in Oakland, California, and our sky is currently red and orange. So it looks dark, even though it's 1242 uh-huh. <laughs> over here. So. I know the fires are really um, just intense out there. So I'm glad you're safe right now. Um, for sure. Yeah, I'm definitely thinking about all of those affected by the fire, but hence the fun lighting. Yeah, so you look beautiful. So it's all it's all good. We didn't notice. Um, but I but I appreciate you saying that. Um, and yeah, and I, I appreciate, you know, what you what you just said. I think that I know that that is 100% true. And I think that that's I never saw it that way, to be totally honest mm-hmm. with you until Honestly, until Trump was elected, I remember (laughs) the morning after he got elected, I called my mom crying and I was like, Mm -hmm. is this what my black, my black friends have been fearing their entire lives? Mm -hmm. Like I had no, I'm not black, so I don't have that experience, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. What were you going to say? We didn't fear, I call him president Twitter because it is better for how I don't age saying his name, but um, It definitely would not be a good thing to have him in office because we already knew he was displaying signs of white supremacy, which is what we're having now, especially with um, ending um, (laughs) anti-racism training and critical race theory and anything about white privilege. So he's definitely for sure um, uh, racist. But we already started the area of fear as soon as we could go into a shared space. Mm. So think about when a shared space is, it's preschool, it's kindergarten. It's school. And so depending on the neighborhood you lived in, there was some type of bias, some and bias is racism, by the way, or stereotype that was coming our way through for those of us who were able to go to college, for those of us to get those positions. There's always something where society, the person or both, which we call systemic and institutional oppression and the interpersonal communications we have with one another that have told us we are not valued. The main difference of what's happening right now is this current president has said in multiple ways, shoot them in response to protesters. Um, Protesters, obviously, at that time when he said it, were primarily BIPOC individual, primarily black people advocating for, um, you know, uh, George Floyd. And then um, we also have heard him say via Twitter, again, why I call him President Twitter, that's how he operates, um, show a clip that says white power, right, on top of other countless things he has done. So when, as a black person, pre him in office, Mm -hmm. um, you're like, okay, yeah, I know I'm gonna have to fight for and advocate for or pick and choose my battles, let's just say in the workplace to keep Mm -hmm. things simple. Now, you know, because you have to navigate that in in your personal life. Now, you know, that the highest person who has the most power doesn't give a shit about black people at all. Women, 
immigrants, BIPOC people. So then the list continues. Yeah. But we know he does not value the humanity and equality of Black people. Yeah. And so unfortunately, because he's in that position of power, it allows people to feel that they can say and do the things that he does, which is why we've seen an uptick, right, in um, violence towards BIPOC people, but especially Black people. Yeah. Yeah, thank you for for explaining that to especially to people who are watching that, you know, might not see it as tangibly all the time, right? Maybe because of their privilege. Um I really right. I really appreciate that. And I know that, you know, you've spoken a bit about your chronic illness journey as well. And that's I think part of how we connected. And so I I would, I became a fan. Yes. <laughs> I would love for you to, you know, share like how you <laughs> oh, hey. hi baby. No, 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 no. Marley, come here. <laughs> I mean the fires are probably not helping. Um <laughs> no, it's more so like, is there a package? Oh, okay. Is there a package? Did we get the package? You know, just put it in the hallway. You know, very exciting. Totally. Okay. Um, no problem. But yeah. Yeah, I'd love for you to I, share I, like how you got connected to the community. What is it in your life that has you connect to the community? Yeah, yeah start there. Absolutely. So um I just celebrated my three year anniversary of being a heartbreaker. And I call myself that because I live with a rare heart condition uh, where my body thinks it's having a heart attack every single day. I have no cardiovascular history with my family or myself. I've been a vegetarian since I was zero. Um, and so I don't have um, high blood pressure, high cholesterol blockages, any of those things. I'm one of about two, 3% of people who whose uh, arteries just spasm. They contract and then close, which can lead to cardiac muscle death, but it leads to spasm. So for anyone who's had a cramp in their calf, that's what it feels like in my chest. Um, I also have pain as a result of that from my left side, all of my left side, from my jaw down to my thigh. And then I'll lose um, uh, sensation and feeling in my left arm. I'll have weakness. I'm also very sexy falls risk. So... Um, that's exciting. So I um, have been living with that for three years. It took about a year and a half to be diagnosed because I was 34 when it started. I was a black, I am a black woman. Um, and when it comes to cardiovascular health for women, they're not fully believed. It's usually um, added to like, well, sweetie, are you stressed? Do you just have some anxiety? This is a panic attack. It's or like, like you no. Know, care of yourself or something. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Did you eat today? It's like, no, yeah, I'm pretty sure all my degrees are in health. Yeah. So I think I have that part down. Um, and so I was able to have a faster diagnosis because my past life I actually worked in workforce development and diversity in healthcare. So um, I was able to get to that place. So I have the, the stereotypes and bias that comes with being a woman. But I also have the same bias and stereotypes that come with being a black woman, yeah. which we've seen with... Um, Horror stories with childbirth for Beyonce and Serena Williams, who won today, which is really exciting. Um, and so there's a stereotype that my pain isn't real and that I have a higher pain tolerance. There's also a stereotype because I'm black that it's like, so drugs, you're probably doing drugs. So every single time I have to go to the emergency room, which I'll go to for the rest of my life, because that's the only way to have a stat test to assure I'm not having a heart attack. Mm -hmm. Or if I do have a heart attack to have, you know, therapy start right away. Yeah. Um, it's a place of PTSD for me because I'm not believed. And again, because I work in healthcare, I've been sent only by my providers. Mm -hmm. I always go literally with a doctor's note. Mm -hmm. So I know that I'm not a drug user, that my pain is real, and that they are supposed to do their jobs, which is to make sure that I don't have cardiac muscle death or an actual heart attack because that's a risk I live with every day. So um, I was definitely finding ways to connect with um, the invisible illness community, people in chronic pain, the um, disabled community. Um, I'm a proud disabled person, like very proud. People me all the time. And I'm like, yeah, you're going to get this fashion while I park in my VIP spot at Target. You're welcome. Um, so um, that's how I found you and, and um, Chronic Con um, official. And um, it's been incredibly helpful, you particularly, because it was an example of this thriving, beautiful woman who's going through shit. So ironically, all my health stuff started a year after I went full-time into my own business. Mm -hmm. And I struggled with learning if I was going to share publicly that I had something mm -hmm. going on because I know the bias and the stereotype I receive as a Black founder and CEO. Um, 
but one day I was just like, fuck it and did it. And, um, it was the best thing ever mm-hmm. because I had to hide who I am. And now I get to advocate for the invisible illness disabled community. And I, I love it. Wow. Thank you so much for sharing that. I, I knew that, that you were a heartbreaker. I've seen you talk about that. Um, but to just hear it from your own words is really meaningful. And I know that it, it, it hopefully, and I know it will inspire so many people that are watching this because, you know, even with all of that happening, even with that constant daily, it's not, you know, every year, or maybe even it's every single day. Um, yeah. you're still fighting for what's important for black lives for, you know, and for, yeah, for marginalized people to have the rights that they deserve. Um, and I think that's such a powerful example for people out there who, yeah, just feel like they don't know how to do that when they're dealing with so much with their body. Um, so I really appreciate that so much. Thank you for telling me. Yeah. yeah. Of course. Yeah. Well, it's already been 15 minutes. I feel like this is like, I, I clearly just need to do an individual Facebook live or Instagram live, sorry, with each of you, because we could talk for I mean, hours. Like Jenna, happy to follow up. I will say, because I know voting is a big part of today and I'm having Mina shirt, phenomenal voter. Yes, Mina, I love her. Uh, Mina Harris, <laughs> that's Kamala Harris's niece for those of you who are watching. Mm-hmm. Yes, There's voting is super important. And yeah. We're going to be giving a ton of, oh, sorry, you broke up for a second. What were you saying about voting? Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, no, I, I just, um, I value her as a regular ass person because she's, like, she gets all, she's amazing. She's obviously amazing. Um, but I, I love just um, making sure she knows how important she is, just being herself. Yeah. Um, but I will say that it's really important to vote. Um, that's the one way to get to humanity and equality for Black people, for Indigenous people, and so forth, is voting. I, I cannot stress that enough. And there's a lot that's at stake here. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, but if you like to keep me gainfully well, employed for another four years. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, 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 I do. Know. But also, like, even when hopefully Biden wins, there's still so much work to do, you know? And so oh, it's there's not so much. Like, I'm not worried. I mean, every day I work hard yeah. to get myself out of this. So, and yeah. I'll be doing totally. this for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Well, yeah, I, I so appreciate that plug. And, and we definitely um, have been talking about the different resources that we have linked in our bio. And um, yeah, once I say bye to you, I'm going to remind everybody of, of all those things. So they don't take up more of your time, but okay. I really, I really appreciate you and I can't wait for more. I just want more. So I'm looking forward to yeah. that. Well, I'm happy to support in any way I can reach out whenever I will always make time for you. So thank you Same. so much. I appreciate this. Thank you. So much. <laughs> Beautiful rest of your day. You. Bye. Bye. All right, angels. So I'm really so thrilled that that worked out. I have never done an Instagram live where there's three people and there's like all these things being woven in and out. So, and thank you for the hearts and the support on the side. I see that. I feel it. I really appreciate it. Um, so for all of you who might not have caught the beginning of the video, who are watching us live, um, I just want to remind you that we have a few different links in our bio at Chronicon Official. You can go and, hi, Melise. Hi, everybody. Thank you for saying that it was awesome and for the love. I really appreciate it. Um, So the link in our bio has a few different resources for you. One, they're all free. They're all not affiliated with us, but we've vetted them. So one is to register to vote, to make sure you're registered to vote. I'm pretty sure every state has different deadlines. So please check on when is the last moment that you can be sure you're registered. Check on your stuff, okay? Um, oh, you're so sweet, Akila. Dr. Akila Kade, that was amazing talking to you. Um, you're amazing. So yeah, so that's one resource. And then another resource is... Um, This whole list that basically helps you figure out how to vote this fall is, um, thanks Mary, is uh, one of the different links that we have in our bio too. And that will basically help you map out, like if you're immune compromised and you're afraid to go to the polls, if you're feeling, you know, stressed about timing, about maybe you want to early, you know, vote or you don't have a printer because you need a printer to like request for the ballot. It's like a whole thing, guys. Okay. It's a whole thing. They don't make it easy for you. So the reason why I wanted you to do this is because I wanted to make sure you guys knew 
that it was a whole thing and we got to be on it, okay? Because voting, like all three of the women that I spoke to today told you, is incredibly important. Um, and then there's also a link for the demo crew that my friend Sarah Sophie Flicker shared with me earlier today. And it's basically a virtual canvassing group. And I'll send you action items every single week on what to do. And there are things that you can opt in, opt out as you choose. And it's basically allowing you to mobilize, but virtually, which is really great. And it really makes us take the focus off of just us and really taking it to people that might really need to hear from us. So I think that's really awesome. So we have those three links in our bio, and I hope that those resources are helpful for you. Today was really, really important to me that we did this and had this conversation. Um, Carrie Twig, Jenna Arnold, Dr. Akila Kaday, you were all so beautiful and profoundly inspiring. And um, yeah, I'm just so grateful for your time, for your time and your energy and your dedication and commitment to making sure people got this message. They took time out of their schedules from all over the world and country. And um, yeah, I'm just really, really grateful. So I'm gonna make sure that I save this, but I'm gonna save it to our IGTV. We're gonna upload it with like a professional editing situation a little bit. Um, next week. So it'll be there for you to share. But that's it. That's all I got for you all. Thank you so much. Mwah. Have a great day.